Welcome back, fanatics. My name is Feral Fanatic, and today we will be continuing uh, Ace Academy. I believe this is episode five, and I look forward to what's going on, uh, what's to come next, and all that jazz. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, let's get started, shall we? <clears throat> as soon as I get home, Nikki jumps off of the couch and greets me. There you are. What took you so long? It's kind of loud. Let me uh, put that down a little bit. Jesus. What? She has her hands on her hips and taps her foot impatiently. Uh, did I forget we had plans tonight? Turn it around on her. I cross my arms and mimic her impatience. The better question is what took you so long? Uh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I've been waiting forever for you to come home. Home? Uh, I guess we did have plans. Why? Well, I have some exciting news. You have a boyfriend? I don't approve of this whole boyfriend thing. Nikki sits down on the couch and I follow her. What is it? Remember when you suggested I start a cooking club? Oh, as okay. So it's not a boyfriend. I'm good. Yeah? I took your advice and spoke with the school administration and I love the idea. I already have a teacher who's agreed to sponsor the club, and a few of my classmates have approached me asking if they could join. <laughs> ah, for you, Nikki. That's awesome, Nikki. I know. I was thinking of structuring it country. so that we can learn a new dish each week, and anyone can share a dish, so it's not just me leading everything. Our first meeting is next week, and I thought I could start us off by teaching something simple in non-Japanese. Burgers. She pauses and looks thoughtfully at me. She make? Sandwich. Make sandwiches. Everybody loves sandwiches. Uh, yeah. Because everyone already knows how to make them. She's not wrong. <laughs> oh, my mic's in the video. Whoops. Let me, uh, let me put that back down here. <laughs> you know what? Screw it. It's going to be right here. Everybody's gonna, it's going to bug everybody. <laughs> Maybe they know how to make normal sandwiches, but not necessarily the fancy tiny ones that are gone in one bite. Mm -hmm. Jeez, Nikki, that's morbid. Let me guess. Those are the only foods you can make. Of course not. I know how to make mac and cheese. <laughs> oh no. Uh, uh, you can make stuff from a box. <laughs> that's funny. I like it. I can make spaghetti. Oh my god, it sounds actually like me. <laughs> Maybe you should join our club. And that is my cue to leave. No, don't go. I was just kidding. <laughs> I know, but I got some studying I need to do anyways. Okay. Congratulations on getting your club started. I bet it'll end up being the most popular club in your school. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I like having a smallish size group so I can all that's interact fair. easily. But having that's a fair. larger group means more exposure to new foods. <laughs> anyway, that's getting way ahead of ourselves. That's fine. Right. You're doing good. Keep it up. Yeah, you still need to uh, decide what you're going to do for your first meeting. Some help you've been. I laugh and begin to head upstairs. You know you still love me. That's what you think. <gasps> oh, no. Just kidding. She wears goodbye anyway. Once in my room, I settle down at my desk and being, uh, begin collecting research and statistics that I can present at the interview. Oh yeah, we have that uh, sponsor interview tomorrow. Oh crap. I want to be well informed, especially if I'm going to be representing my team. Wait. Did Kaori or Mayu ever respond to my text? I quick, I took quick check on my phone shows me they did. I opened Mayu's first. It doesn't cause you, cause you much trouble if I don't go, but I have a previous engagement. I can't make it. Best of luck. I shrug. At least she was nice about it. Next, I open Kyori's text. Why did you or why did you just go the interview? You can't do the interview. Words so soon. Of course I can't make it. Don't mess this up. 
Thanks for the vote of confidence, Kaori. At least you and I will be there to back me up. That's fair. Watch, well, she's gonna cancel on me too. I read over my notes a few more times until I'm confident about what I'll say. Then I had to bed early so I can be well rested tomorrow. Do 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 do. I wake up after the first sound of my alarm and hop out of bed. Today is the interview. As I get dressed, I practice my speech in my head. You practice that loud, honestly. Breakfast goes by in a blur as I try to anticipate what questions they will ask me. Before long, I reach the campus. As if in a daze, I go to class and take a seat by the Good window. Good morning, class. I hope you are all prepared for the pop quiz. Shit. You are absolutely right. That is why, young man, it is called a pop quiz. How can you prepare for a pop quiz if you don't know about it? The only person who is amused by that is the professor. <laughs> Fair. He hands, a, he hands one page out to each student, and soon I am staring at a sheet of questions. What is the difference between overheating a core and draining a core? Oh, F. I'll fix C. It's always C. No. Uh, overheating occurs when the core is utilized too much in a short amount of time, while draining a core is total energy is depleted. That was B. That sounds about right. I spent some time completing the rest of the questions. When the quiz complete, I hand it to the front of the class. Thank you. I nod and return to my seat. The professor waits for uh, the rest of the class to finish before beginning the lesson. That is all for today. Have a good afternoon. As soon as class is dismissed, I rush out of the building. Oh, it doesn't reach. Whoop, let's go over a little bit. <clears throat> I'm not sure why I'm in such a hurry. I still have a few hours before I need to meet Yuna. I wonder what I should do to pass the time. Uh, Mayu's cute. Valerie, we'll ignore Valerie. Mayu, let's go. It's such a nice day out that I decided to do some studying outside. I make myself comfortable on the bench in the courtyard when I see Mayu walk past. She's carrying a case with her. Hey, Mayu! Wow, why did I sound Jersey? I stand and wave. She turns at the sound of her of her name and comes over when she sees me. Hi, I didn't see you there. No worries. Where are you headed? I'm going to the music room. Oh, she plays music. Nice. She shuffles a case from one hand to the other. That's cool. You play an instrument? Yep, the violin. Mayu just got 100% better for waifu material, guys. And ladies, everyone's watching. Yep, the violin. Do you play an instrument? My parents tried to get me interested in music when I was young, and I was forced to do lessons. But I quit when I was older to pursue other activities. I understand. When my father first put me in lessons, I hated it. But the more I practiced and learned about music, the more I liked it. Not for everybody, but yeah, I can see that. That's good. It's always harder to do something when you dislike it, but it's so true. Why are you not? I'd love to hear you play sometime. Why do your eyes grow wide and her hands tremble? Oh, I don't know. I think I'd be too embarrassed. How come? It's so embarrassing to play in front of an audience. I practice alone. Hmm. So you've never performed at a recital or anything? She shakes her head. No. I've always had private lessons, so I've never had to play. Oh shit! A I need a haircut. And need to stop hitting my microphone. <laughs> Fair enough. What are you scared of? I'll teach you a trick. Just imagine everybody in their underwear. Wow, good trick, guy. He's probably gonna embarrass her even more. I mean, in that case, you don't have to be embarrassed. They should be embarrassed. Why his face turns beet red and she stutters in response. Exactly what I thought was gonna happen. <laughs> okay, how about we make a deal? I'll do something embarrassing, then you'll play for me. No, you don't have to do that. But if I do, you'll play for me, right? She bites her lip. Ooh, worry clouds her eyes. Don't be afraid. Watch this. One long leap, I jump onto the bench, but I miscalculate my distance. My foot hits the edge of the seat. I windmill my arm, trying to catch my balance. Ow! 
But then not toppling over the back of the pits and falling face first into the grass. All the surrounding students pause to stare at me. And the laughter that follows seems to stretch forever before it gradually dies down. Oh no! <laughs> Sounds like stuff I do. Everyone loses interest. Uh, once everyone loses interest, I untangle my limbs and push myself to standing. My cheeks are burning as I check myself for bruises. That definitely did not go as planned. Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Mai's face and neck are bright red, and as I straighten up, she hides her face in her hands. I can't believe you did that! Uh, hey, why are you embarrassed? I don't know what I did that, and I'm okay. Uh, I don't know. She lowers her hands and glances at me. I grin at her. See? I'm still alive! Mai hesitates, and she laughs. Very nice, how cute her laugh is. Ooh. She notices me staring and hides her laughter with her hand. What? Nothing. It's your turn now. Mayu shakes her head. I can't. It's too embarrassing. But I promise I'll play for you another time. But only when it's just you. I nod. I'll hold you to it. I'd better get to practice now. Sure, I'm going to go somewhere where no one just watched me do that. <laughs> nice. Mayu giggles again, then waves goodbye. Once she's gone, I find a secluded area on campus to finish studying. I have to itch on my arm. What time is it? Yuna is already waiting for me at the library. A tablet with the SBA logo is clutched in her hand. Uh, she smiles and breathes a sigh of relief when she oh, sees me. Oh, good. You're still wearing your uniform. I forgot to tell you yesterday to wear it and remembered too late to text you. Oh, I was so pre preoccupied on what I would say today that I forgot to think about what I'd wear. No worries. Hope my voice sounds more confident than I feel. Yuna notices the waver in my voice. She places a hand on my shoulder. The heat of her hand soothes my nerves and I relax okay, a little bit. Okay, well, are you ready to go? Yeah. She starts towards the bus stop when I stop her. I can drive us. Her cheeks turn pink. But she grins widely. I'm immediately reminded how her face lit up at the last time she saw my that bike. That would be great. I lead her to my bike, and we both hop on with ease. And once she's settled, we speed off. You know directly where to go, and eventually tells me to park in front of an impressive building. It's narrow, but shoots straight into the sky, cutting through the clouds. As I walk in, a perky receptionist is a reuse of this image. Great sister behind her desk. Welcome to Work Tap Corporation. How may I help you? Hmm. Yuna steps forward. I'm Yuna Misaki from Ace Academy's SBA. We have an appointment with Mr. Takeda. Takeda! <gasps> That's a pretty famous uh, Japanese name. The reception smiles and gestures to the empty of chairs. Course. If you'll please take a seat, he'll be with you shortly. As soon as we take our seats, the receptionist types a rapid sequence into her computer, then drags the document from her monitor out to her tablet and disappears into a hall in the back. I glance at Yuna, she's meticulously going over her notes. Are you nervous? She thinks for a minute. Not as much as I thought I'd be. Are you? I'm either really nervous or really hungry. My stomach is a knot. You know, smiles encouragingly. Don't worry, you'll do great. Her confidence helps ease my nerves, and I smile back. I'm glad to have you with me here. Glad to have you here with me. Wow, my eh, both work. A blush creeps into her cheek, and she seems pleased. A receptionist comes back and gestures for us to follow her. Her ponytail bounces behind her as she walks briskly down the hall and directs us into a spacious office. Hello, Mr. Takeda. A portly older man sits behind an old-fashioned mahogany debt. Looks kind of like Uncle Kaito. His jowls wiggle as he offers us seats, which we both take. The walls are painted white, but one wall has a translucent sheen with Yuna's SB submission packet projected on it. His chair squeaks in protest as he leans forward to greet us. Miss Misaki, it's a pleasure to see you again. 
Thank you for agreeing to meet with us, Mr. Takeda. I'd like to introduce my associate. Adelian Typhus, it's nice to meet you. He nods an acknowledgement while Yuna continues. He is here to represent his team at Ace Academy. And you are in need of a sponsor. Yes, sir. He waves his hand behind the uh, towards the wall and shuffles the data on there. As you can see, Miss Misaki did a detailed job of describing you and your team in your application. But I'd like to hear from you. Tell me about yourself. Let's not screw this up. I grew up in a world of gears and knew from an early age that I wanted to be a pilot. While a student at CIUNY began my program of piloting and earned top marks in all my classes. I recently transferred and tested into the pilot program at Ace Academy where I'm pursuing my degree in piloting. As a transfer student, that's not an easy program to test into. He sounds impressed. Tell me, out of all your other options, why did you choose Warp Tech Corporation? I don't think I did. It was an easy decision. Warp Tech Corporation sets the standard for gear weaponry. I read on your, about your latest announcement on the events in the particle technology. Sa uh, same output on being weaponry while reducing core uses by 15, 15%. Now, new competitors have made a breakthrough like that yet. There has also been some controversy over that release. Some are saying using the new technology will affect the long, long longevity of a weapon, but there's no proof of that yet. I prefer to see the evidence than believe rumors. He nods. It's refreshing to see a young person keeping up to date with the latest releases. I think I detect a hint of approval in his voice. Okay, and why should Warp Tech Corporation choose you? In other words, what sets you apart from the competition? Our team is half women. We're a breath of fresh air. As a new team, we aren't so set in our ways that we stifle creativity. We're not afraid to try new strategies when we think it will benefit the team and we're receptive to feedback. That said, we're also acutely aware of our abilities. We work well together because we are up front with each other, not only about our strengths, but also about our weaknesses, and we use that to acknowledge uh, that knowledge to our advantage. I sneak a peek at Yuna, who looks pleased. Mr. Takabe seems to appreciate my answer as well. Well, I think I've heard enough for now. Miss Misaki, do you have a copy of your team's qualifier transcripts? Yes, of course. She flips on her tablet and flicks the document onto the projected wall. The interview seems to be going well. I glance at Yuna, who smiles encouragingly at me. Mr. Takade takes a quick glance at the file and frowns. Your team is only ranked 21. Yes, sir. He sighs and turns off the projector. You seem generally passionate about your team and your studies. And perhaps if the circumstances were different, we would consider your candidacy. Unfortunately, Warp Tech only accepts Boo. teams who are ranked in the top 10 from Ace Academy. And as, as, as I'm still processing the rejection, Yuna protests on my behalf. Mr. Takeda, couldn't you make an exception? You said yourself that if rank weren't a factor, his team would be a strong candidate. A representation by you would make a significant difference in their growth and development, and their success reflects positively on you and your company. I'm sorry, Miss Misaki. Uh, good try. I do believe with skills like his, he will find a sponsor. Just not with us. Won't you even give him a chance? Miss Misaki, I'm sure you understand the image that we have built and what would happen to that image if we stopped recruiting from the top 10. I thank you very much for your interest in us and wish you the best of luck Boo. in your future universe. That sucks. His voice has a hard edge of finality. He gestures towards the door, then returns his attention to his desk. Shit. <laughs> All pretenses dropped. Yuna storms out of the office while I follow calmly behind. Disappointment makes my feet feel heavy. Yeah, that sucks. As we leave the building, Yuna whirls to face me. What? A hypocrite! How can his company promote taking risks when he won't take any himself? Dang, girl, get him! I'm sorry you had oh, to. Oh, I didn't peek my mic just then. It's okay. It was a long shot, anyways. Even though we didn't get the sponsorship, I still appreciate you helping me out. Don't give up just yet. I will get you a sponsor. I'm not sure how far positive thing will get us. No, it's not do that. It's kind of a dick thing to say. She's trying her best. Leaving less to the imagination. This song is really dramatic. Leaving less to the imagination might work out in our favor. 
Let's be realistic. The teams will need to beat are in the top or the all in the top twenty. What are the chances of us finding a good sponsor who hasn't already scooped up by competing teams? It's fine. I'll take care of it. How? It's my job. Let's just go back to campus. There's work to do. Without waiting for me to answer, she hops on the back of my bike. I get on after her and start the engine. The unit is quiet the entire ride back to campus. When we arrive, she gives me a hurried goodbye and rushes off, leaving me wondering just what she has planned. While sitting here and stewing in my thoughts isn't productive. I have some time before I need to go home. <laughs> Why? My dog is licking the ottoman. Why are you licking the ottoman? What are you doing? <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> I know you want attention. Give me attention when I'm done recording, okay? Maybe if someone will be free. Here we go, dog slapper. I mean, now. <laughs> Kayori! The only person here, yeah. I'm finally done with classes for the day. For some reason, I strangely. I feel. I strangely. I'm strangely. Wow! Oh my god. <clears throat> Start over. I'm strangely tired and don't feel like much like hanging out or on campus. I'll go home and rest up. I walk to the parking lot and spot my bike where I left it. As soon as I reach it, a sleek white car pulls up and blocks the exit. The car has tinted windows and windows and looks like something out of my price range. Way out of my price range. As I can see only the back of the car, I guess it might it might be a panther. Panther? Is that like a weird thing for like a cougar or something? I don't know. Although the engine is still running, there's no movement from the car. That's kind of weird. Are they waiting for someone? If so, I wish they'd pick a different spot. How am I supposed to leave if they're blocking the exit? Besides, it, wouldn't it make more sense to pick someone clo up closer to campus and not in the heart of a parking lot? I hop on my bark as I ponder these questions. Just as I'm about to back out, the passenger door opens and a smooth leg steps out. Following the leg is a cute girl with red hair. Wait a minute. That's Kaori. Stay out of the way. Duck. I'll hop off the back of my bike and hide behind a parked car. The last thing I need is for Kayori to see me and keep me spying on her. Which I guess is technically what I'm doing anyways. The driver's side the driver's side door opens and an old man steps out. He looks European, definitely not Japanese. I guess he's in his mid-30s and I can tell he keeps in shape by most of his shirt clings to his biceps. He reaches into the back of the car and hands Kayori a bag. With a wide smile, he envelops her into a hug. I wait for the inevitable slap, but it never happens. Said Coyote accepts the hug without protest. That can't be right. Maybe it's like her brother or foreign boyfriend. I emerged from the, behind the car and walked on my bike to get a better look. Oh, she's so calm right now. She's even smiling back at him. She tries to linger in the hug, but Coyote gently put, uh, pulls away and wins goodbye to him. The man waves back as he returns to his car and drives off. As she heads up back towards the campus, her path leads straight to my parked bike. Hey, Kaori. She jumps slightly on my voice. Oh, it's you. She glances behind her and sighs with relief when the white car is nowhere in what sight. What are you doing here? Rude. Obviously, I'm getting my bike. I could ask you the same thing. I think the better question is, what are you doing here? Kaori crosses her arms. I ask you first. But I know your answer will be more interesting than mine. You're wrong. I'm just going to my dorm. Oh, okay. What are we up to today? Does it matter? Rude. I guess I'm being nosy. I was just curious. I want to learn more about you. Her expression softens slightly, and I think I see a faint blush of pink on her cheeks. It's nothing. Just a thing I went to. Hmm. Kaori is being really evasive. While I'm curious as to who that man was, it's obvious she doesn't want to talk about it. Leave it alone. I should respect Kaori's privacy and trust that she'll tell me when she's ready. All right, if you say so. She nods. I'm going now. I'll see you later. Yeah, later. Hmm. I wonder what that was all about. As soon as Kaori is out of view, I kick my bike in the gear and head home. I'm in a happier mood when I arrive home. Hey guys, I'm home. You can't just decide that without telling me. Uncle Kaito's voice stops me. I can see him pacing back and forth in so the kitchen. So cut it short. This is the opening day of my new restaurant. 
They'll expect me to be there, and they'll expect you there, too. Yikes. That's not good. Poor guy. As I get closer to the kitchen, I can hear one's voice on the other end of the line. I really don't care. Part of our arrangement was that we'd consult each other before making a decision, and we didn't. So how you're supposed to be in two places at once really isn't my problem. That's fair. A flurry of muffled words and the line has got to frowning deeper and Don't deeper. Don't forget, we are still married. We promised to do whatever it took to make sure nothing interfered with our careers. Oh. Well, if you don't show up, then that will certainly interfere with my career. Married? Is he talking to Aunt Yuki? There's a pause. I think I hear her say, I'll see what I can do and hang up. Uncle Kaito slams the phone onto the table and then falls into a chair and holds his head in his hands. Hey, Uncle Kaito. He glances up and gives me a weak You're smile. Back. How was school today? Good. I sit beside him. I wasn't trying to eat a trap, but I heard you talking to Aunt Yuki just now. He looks a little uneasy, but waits for me to finish. What did you mean by still married? Isn't Aunt Yuki just away on business? Oh no! Sort of. Kaito sighs wearily and rubs his temples. I suppose you're old enough to know the truth. Your aunt and I are separated. Oh, we God. have been for the last <laughs> six months. Last six months? But you aren't divorced? No. How come we didn't know? We're your family. We had to keep it quiet. Divorce is viewed differently here in Japan. It's not as common as that's, in the States. That's very true, and I don't want our personal issues to interfere with our careers. I remember the stories Mom told me about how difficult it was when she and Dad first got married. She couldn't have a state in Japan. She couldn't have stayed in Japan even if she wanted to. If you two are just separated, does that mean Aunt Yuki is here in Isokaze? Yes. I get it. I know Japan has stricter rules on family and what's proper, so I don't blame you for keeping this a secret from us. Kato grins in relief. I don't know how much that means to me, kid. Are you going to tell Nikki? He thinks before responding. Yes, I will. Why are you waddling around like ding dong? Do you think she'll be angry you lied? Nikki has always been more sensitive than I. He shrugs. Maybe, but I think she's mature enough to understand why we did it. Yeah, it must be exhausting hiding it from everyone. It has been. What did Anne Yuki say when you were when you told her you, we were living with you? Uh, well, she doesn't know. About that. That's what trails off and refuses to meet in my eyes. She doesn't know we're here. No. Were you planning on telling her? Of course. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I nod. Uncle Kato doesn't share any more, but I can't stop myself from asking. Since we're talking about it now, what happened between you two? He sighs. Yuki was ready to have kids, and I wasn't. Oh, no. We discussed the possibility of having children when we first got married, and I kept pushing it back. I wanted to focus on my career, and for a while, so did she. I feel bad. I, want, I hope this works out in the end, well, but these you two. You know how women are. At some point, their biological clock starts ticking. She didn't want to wait anymore. But you still weren't ready? No. After that huge argument, we started to drive each other crazy. I became acutely aware of all those small things Yuki did that I hated. We fought all the time, and at some point, we agreed that this wasn't working anymore. And that's how it's been for the last six months until that we can sucks. figure out a more permanent solution. Oop. Chipstick. Hey. It's kind of funny that even though you weren't ready for kids, you end up with them many ways. Hey, Grant. Uh, you guys don't count. You practically take care I'm of yourself. I'm making a bunch of noise, man. Provide the roof. Take you out in a minute. Gee, thanks. So that maybe it's a good thing you didn't have kids. He laughs. So what was that phone call tonight about? Kaito turns solemn again. Part of our agreement for our separation was that we will both do whatever it takes to keep up the pretense of marriage when it involves our careers. Oh, why not? She's going on some sort of retreat with her girlfriend. Normally we consult with each other before booking any trips to prevent something like this from happening. But this time she didn't. I really need her there. Maybe you guys should just get that divorce. All traces of playfulness has gone from Kaito's face. Excuse me? What is this about it? Well, living together wasn't working. Being separated doesn't seem to be working for you two either. 
she doesn't show up to the grand opening, how would that be any better than getting divorced? It's not the same. Missing one engagement can easily be excused. There's no turning back from divorce. Neither one of us can afford that. That's fair. I shrug. If you say I so. I do. Uncle Kato glances at the clock and stands. I didn't realize how late it's gotten. I have an early start tomorrow. Don't you always have an early start? You get up before I do. True, but I have an even earlier start than usual. Yikes. Ugh. Say goodnight and Kato heads upstairs. I feel kind of bad for picking that option. I go into the living room and turn on the TV. After watching my shows and the news, I turn in for the night. I wake up and yawn. Another day, another class. As if on autopilot, I get dressed and go through the morning routine. Then I head back on my bike and drive to school. What are you doing? When I arrive, I head straight for class and wait for the professor. He rests promptly and begins class. Good morning. Today we'll be discussing the differences between military grenade weaponry and those used in recreational matches. I don't think it's a grenade it's like grade. I want to learn. This should be interesting stuff. I focus on the professor's lecture. The fundamental difference between the two is that military grenade weaponry are configured for energy output, which can cause lethal damage. Mm. Recreational weaponry is closely regulated, so it can't actually destroy the gear frame. Since the shields on a gear get the brunt of the damage, we consider a depowered gear in recreational matches as destroyed. What if someone brought in an unregulated weapon for a match? Before every match, the equipment of each gear is checked and double-checked to ensure the energy output is within my... proper parameters. What if my weapon or weapons ever came in for my, my mech? What about the qualifier matches? There was a gear that did some energy output override thing. That's us. Uh, as one, the class looks at me. Uh, During that specific qualifier match, the gear's energy core is what serves with additional power, not his weapons. Although, I must admit, I've never seen a core do that before. Uh, Hopefully, this young man can enlighten us on how he did it. Are you talking about my core? No one finds out my secret! That's right, our team isn't giving up that information. Class looks at the point about the professor grins. Smart move. Don't give away your advantage. Let's get back to the lesson. He returns to his lecture. We gotta get in that top ten, guys. Once class ends, I hurry out of the room. My phone is already in my hand by the time I get outside. Let's see if anyone's free. Oh man, I can talk to anybody. Who should I talk to? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, that's not these two. Mayu seems cool. Yuna. Hayori seems cool. Let's hang out with the. Uh... Uh, maybe Mayu would play the instrument for us if we go this time. Let's try it. What if Mayu was serious? Yeah. What if Mayu was serious about playing the violin for me? I'm actually really curious how well she plays. I dial Mayu's number. She answers the phone. Hello? Hey, Mayu, about that violin session. Um, well, I'm ready to listen if you're ready to play. Uh, sorry, but my father is coming to visit Ew. again. And I have errands I need to run before he gets here. Wasn't her father just here? Oh, he comes to visit often, doesn't he? Just a slight pause, and I'm positive she's thought nodding. He's an alumni of Ace and has regular business with the oh. Dean. So he's here very often. Nice. Your father knows the Dean? Yeah. They were classmates here at Ace. But that's not why he's here so often. Ace has the strongest pilot program in Japan. So naturally, most of the graduates here are accepted into my father's military program. She's a military father? He and the Dean have been working together Whoa. to build a bridging program between Ace and the military college. Whoa, what happened with the audio? She's no longer on the phone. And your father teaches at the military college? Yep. That's pretty impressive. I knew my father was pretty distinguished based on what I've heard about him, but I had no idea he was this distinguished. I wonder if Mayu always seems worried or stressed when he comes to visit. I mean, it'll be like Hideo Kami. If Hideo can't, Hakimi came to visit. I don't know who that is. 
Wait a minute. Mayu! Uh? You lost him as a Kimmy! Um, yes? The same Kimmy as Hideo Kimmy? You mean grandfather? How can you say that so casually? Grandfather? Do you know who he is? Yes, he's my grandfather. He's the father of military. You're piloting. I suppose that's true too. Anyway, I should get going. I'm sorry I can't play for you today. That's okay. Are you free over the weekend? Maybe we can postpone until then. Sure. Great. Don't back out of me, okay? I'm responding jokingly, but Mayu takes it seriously. I promise you will have your private show this weekend. <laughs> Uh, did she just say what I think she said? I mean, concert! I I'll play then! I mean, I'll <laughs> play for you then! P play my violin! I tried to hold back a laugh. Okay. Uh, I have to go! Bye! She quickly is the call. Although I can't see her, I can imagine how adorable Mayu looks. <laughs> She's flustered and I'm a little disappointed to have missed it. Well, at least I have a weekend to look forward to. I'm in the campus gym finishing up my workout. When I return to my locker, there's a mixed text from Kayori. Emergency meeting! Meet now in the hangar! Jeez, it's all caps. I'd better get going. I arrive at the hangar about the same time as showing my Mayu. Kayori impatiently waits impatiently in front of her Finally. gear. Finally! That took you a while. Might have gotten a little distracted. Kim, as soon as I get your text, I had to cross the quad on the way over here, and I guess the track team is practicing because there are a bunch of girls jogging. Show looks intrigued. Tell me more about these joggers. No. <laughs> hey, why are you mad at me? He's the one who was watching them. That's funny. Let's not dwell on the past. What's important is that I'm here now, right? She raises an eyebrow. Here he addresses the rest of the team. What about you guys? We lost track of time. Fairy blinks and waves her hand dismissively. Never mind. We have more important That's things true. to discuss. We got shot down. Like we, need, we need a sponsor. Everyone becomes serious. Our gears need a lot of maintenance to return to peak fighting condition. And the next round is tomorrow. I don't know why, but everyone I talked to was really rude and unhelpful. Joe and I share a knowing glance, and Kayori catches us. What? Nothing, nothing. She continues to stare. It's just sometimes you can come across a little Car. harsh. I'm just honest. Sure, but honesty doesn't make people like you. You need to get in touch with your soft, warm, feminine side. Gotcha, why? Kaori raises an eyebrow. Is that what you do? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I mean to the warm thing, not the soft and feminine thing. I stare at him blankly. Uh, we started I'm blankly. just going to shut up now. Before you do, did you manage to get a sponsor? He folds his hand behind his head and leans into nope. them. Nope. <laughs> you forgot to ask around, didn't you? Maybe. He looks sheepish. And Kayori rolls her eyes. What about you, Mayu? Can your father sponsor us? Mayu shakes her head. Unfortunately, he's backing the team I was originally supposed to join. When I was invited onto the team, Father was so happy, he promised he'd sponsor them. Yikes. Even though I never joined them, he can't go back on his promise. That's fair. Curry nods and faces you me. You had that interview yesterday, didn't you? <sighs> yeah, I went to the interview with Warp Tech. It didn't work out. Why am I not surprised? It had less to do with me and more to do with our team status. I can show you the full report from the SBA if you want to know the official reason. We basically weren't a uh, high enough rank. I fish my phone out of my pocket and it flashes little battery warnings at me before it dies completely. Where's the report? Uh, hold on, I have to charge my phone. My gaze lands on my gear. I race to it and head to my cockpit. My teammates call back to me, but I ignore them. Once I plug my phone into the uh, dock connection, it lights up with the charging symbol. Everyone's wearing confused faces when I climb out of the cockpit. What? Why didn't you just use an outlet? Yes, sir. Why are you push an outlet on the wall? What did that get here? 
Uh, that's new. No, they're not. Never noticed them before. Ooh, what about those? And those? Show points out another outlet. In fact, there are outlets everywhere. Nope, never seen them before either. Besides, an outlet doesn't do me any do me any good if I don't have a phone charger with me. Oh, I suppose that makes sense. Anyway, I That's guess fair. we're back to square one. Back? We never left square one. <laughs> Show you're not helping. Don't give up hope just yet. I might have some. Another meeting? No, my friend the SBA is still helping us search. Okay. In the meantime, the rest of us should continue our search too. I'll take another look at what Ace offers. Maybe there's some kind of campus grant or funding we can apply for. Mayu, do you think you could reach out to some of the other major corporations we haven't talked to yet? Maybe with your background, you'll have more luck than we would. Mayu nuts. Maybe Sho can ask around local businesses? Okay. Good idea. Uh, would local business really be able to pay for the repairs for our, our, um, our mechs, our gears? I follow up with my contact. She nods. Hopefully, we'll find someone. But there's a chance we might have to fight with our gears as is. Confident we'll get someone in time. It's tomorrow. I don't see it happening. Mighty smiles and nods. Show clasp me on the back. Okay, we have our plan. Text me if you guys get any leads. We all nod. I'm off then. I've got some stuff to take care of. I hope you mean reaching out to the businesses show and not playing your video games. Of course Hold that's out. what I meant. The arcade industry is a lucrative place to find a sponsor. My size. So <laughs> he wears the signature smile. Okay, okay. Let's go find us a sponsor. Why you beams? Fair wave at us before heading out. I'll be going too. Tell me if your friend is successful. Oh, feel stressy. Oh, look for my shirt. Yeah, Evie. Woohoo, Evie! Oh, wait. Uh, 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 yeah, it's hard to see. I nod and Kaori leaves. Nothing left for me to do but go home. Making sure stupid things recording. I don't want to repeat. I hope my thing's pulling right. And then, on a little drive later, I arrive at home. I'm back. I walk into an eerily quiet living room. Looks like I'm the first one here. It feels a bit strange. Nikki smile, bright smiles usually here to greet me. Maybe she has an after school activity, club activity or something. Oh, she does have the uh, thing. I reach in my pocket to see if she texted me. My heart sinks as my hands grasp air. There's a void where my phone should be. Crap, I must have left it in my gear. It's on a setting and it'll be evening by the time I reach campus. Hopefully it won't be too much trouble getting to Eagle after hours. I remember seeing CIN was pretty restrictive on who could enter the hangar at night. I hop back on my bike and drive back to Ace Academy. Surprisingly, traffic is heavy and it takes longer than expected to reach campus. I think it sounded recording from my computer. Huh. Hopefully, uh, a handful of students cross the quad as they head towards their either the evening classes or the bus station. Even though the sky is in inky darkness, the pathways on campus are still bathed in the soft light. It's kind of peaceful. The pilot's lounge is just as big as always, but I don't recognize too many of the students here. Most of them must be upperclassmen, either third or fourth year. I slip through unnoticed and arrive at the hangar entrance. I'm about to swipe in when Hold a guard on. stops me. What's your business in the uh -oh. hangar? The popo. I forgot something. It's not a lie, but it would be too embarrassing to tell me the whole truth. Luckily, the guard doesn't seem to care. He gives me one clear clamp to run now. Go ahead and swipe. Thanks. I bring my student ID in proximity to the sensor. A second later, the success chime says that the door slides open. I follow the tunnel to the hangar. The sound of power tools, machinery, and metallic ringing echoes along the halls. Walls, not halls. It makes sense that most of the repair work happens after hours. It's a lot safer for them to work without the threat of students walking around causing potential disasters. Instinctively, my feet lead me to Eagle. What the? A bluish hue from the active terminal that illuminates my docking station. That doesn't seem right. I'm sure I turned everything off when I left. Secure cautiously, I tiptoe towards my gear. Oh shit, it's Valerie! There's a figure crouched in front of Eagle. The person is dressed entirely black and wearing a hoodie that hides his or her face. 
He still looked gross to my gear. Stranger hasn't detected my presence yet. Go. Uh, stay quiet, seek from behind. Staying in the shadows, I continually creep towards the eagle as I close the distance between us. I know how small and petite the person is. It must be a girl. Either Valerie or Nikki. But I can't think of anyone who used her when she's getting my gear. Once I'm only a few steps away, she tenses as noticing a presence. Before she can react, I grab her shoulder and roughly spin her to face me. Valerie, what are you doing here? She grins. Her gaze flicks to my hand upon still upon her shoulder. You like it rough. Oh lord, no. <clears throat> I am not amused. A scowl and a smile, and the smile on her face wavers. What the hell are you doing to my eagle? She flinches and the, the harshness of my nothing, tone. Nothing, I promise. You are obviously doing something with the terminal. That's not nothing. You hold up her hands in defense. I wanted to get a better reading on your core. I'm not altering anything though. Just oh, studying. Why? To figure out how your core was able to sustain such a high energy output for so long Woman. without completely burning out. Given the size of your core and the cooling system, the heat dissipation doesn't seem like it would have sustained longer than a few seconds. Yet it lasted almost ten minutes. Maybe there's a direct cooling injection to the primary source? I also didn't consider the acceleration of airflow given the she knows her stuff apparently. Holy crap! Calculation using. My start to glaze over as she continues her technical jargon. As I struggle to pay attention, I can't help but be a little impressed. She's more than meets the eye. I notice that the longer she speaks, the more relaxed her body becomes, and her voice is laced with excitement. She's really passionate about how gears work, and I believe that she's telling the truth when she says she never intended to sabotage Eagle. Here, I'll prove I wasn't changing anything. I watch as Valerie retraces a few screens with all the configuration data unmodified. Okay. Huh? I get it. You are curious, but you can't just break into other people's robots and mess with their parts. She looks I'm away. Sorry. Failure bill. For silence, she looks sideways at me. So, I guess you wouldn't want to know that your primary weapon can actually benefit from an airflow exhaust here and here. What? She punches inside my open you gear. See right there? Yes, I think. It'll still require validation testing, though. You should probably get your engineer to check it out. My engineer? Yeah, you know. The person who makes sure all your gears are working properly and helps you with any upgrades or improvements. Do the sponsors do that? Valerie shakes her head. They help a lot when it comes to major repairs or new items, but an engineer on your team takes care of any general maintenance. What's... Of like. Oh... Maybe we should get an engineer. I lost my team about getting an engineer. Sounds like we could really benefit from you one. You definitely would. She scoots closer and smiles. Luckily for you, you already have one person perfect for the job. You don't have a team? Really? She scoots even closer and bats her eyelashes at me. Who's that? <laughs> Valerie sighs. Just think about it. There's another pause. To avoid the awkwardness, I shut down the open terminal. So we should get going yeah. then. Another one of us moves. Don't touch my gear again without my permission. I I won't. Wait for her to leave, but she doesn't budge. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. She stands in place and waves. You aren't leaving. Neither are you. Okay, on the count of three, we'll leave together. She nods. One, two, three. We both stay put. You didn't move! Did you? What the hell are you kids still doing here? Oh shit. Security catches off guard when you simultaneously stammer nonsense. She sh he shakes his head. Your business here is done and you have to leave. Another well, glance at me and a glance at her to wait for her to move. She doesn't. Suddenly her strong arm grips mine. Hey! Uh? Guard holds Valerie too. He physically leads us toward the exit. You get home. It's late. Pass through the doors and the guard shuts them behind us. Valor and I are once again standing in silence. Well, I'll see you around. That was awkward as hell. Yep, see you. We both head our separate ways. She walks towards the dorm while I head to the parking lot. She's not just thought. I guess she's a thought engineer. Or engineer thought. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, once I reach my bike, I drive home. 
Nikki still isn't home by the time I return. Where can she be? I reached in my pocket for my photographs at the air. Ah, oh, crap. Not again. Open phone again. I turn off my alarm to roll out of bed. Time to get ready for class. As I head down the stairs, I feel uneasy. Today will be our first match. I really hope Yuno is able to work her magic and get us a sponsor. What kind of people have? Nikki G. Nikki G. Nikki is rummaging in the living room, and I smile when I see her. Even when I'm stressed or worried, Nikki always seems to know how to put my mind at ease. Hey, Nikki, just the person I was hoping to see. Look, if you're hungry, you have to find your own food. I don't have time to cook today. Woo! She doesn't pause to look at me when she speaks. She continues gathering what she needs for the day. Hmm. Not quite the welcome I was suspecting. Are you okay? Yes, just in a hurry. Oh, do you need a ride to school? She freezes and whirls on me. Now you offer me a ride? A little too late for that. She throws her book into her bag. Uh oh, doesn't have a Whoa! She doesn't seem okay. Are you sure you're okay? Yes. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. Did something happen? She just stares at me. Uh, did I do something? Why does she look at me like it's my fault? When I don't answer, Nikki sighs. You need to get to school. I'll see you later. What the heck did I do? She's out of the door before I can say goodbye. That was weird. Shrugging it. Oh, shit. I hit my stupid mic again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. Are you okay? I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm a pediatrician, I swear. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, shrug ahead to the kitchen to whip up a quick breakfast. Hopefully, she's in a better mood next time I see her. Maybe she's stressed about the whole club thing. It's, it's a big possibility right there. After eating, I hop on my bike and drive to school. You piece of crap, because I'm an idiot. Boop, 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 boop. Yuna is already in class when I arrive. She wakes and waves as I walk in. I sit beside her. Hey, Yuna. She wears a wide grin and fidgets with excitement. You seem like you're in a good mood. I am. She pauses. Aren't you? Uh, I guess so. I thought you'd be a little more excited than that. Really? How come? She seems confused. Uh, well, I guess I just assumed that this had been hard for you. And I thought I'd helped bring you some real... What? What? What are you talking about? You know, I found you a sponsor. Oh no, I don't have a phone. Oh, that's amazing! How did you manage that? Why? Oh, that was weird. They froze. I called in a favor, anyway. but that doesn't matter. I've already oh no, my screen is messing up again. Repairs are underway. That sucks. I forgot to cut my. Ah, uh, that's annoying. All right, well I guess we're gonna have to end it here. In that case, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you feel humble enough, you can like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.